Excuse me, and, sir. Uh, and walking around and taking in the tradition and of course realizing that you know the 65 crew and harry were on the cover of sports illustrated it was a different era yeah. um but the sort of men who made that era and uh so grand um and thomas in particular i think the boathouse is in and i hope that today's row shows everybody here that the young men are fighting as hard as they ever have that they're bringing absolutely every last fiber that they're capable of, of that they have in their possession to drive that boat home. And while victory eluded us today in the first boat, it was a terrific effort and it's the sort of pride, I can't say how pride, proud I am of them and of this entire team to produce that. And I, I have to feel that Tom Pollock and his classmates would feel the same. And, and this particular boat we found was so valuable and so comfortable and so fast that we had to ship it to the West Coast <laughs> for the IRA. And we brought it back and it made it on time, thankfully. And I did warn everybody that something could happen in the crossing, um, but it's a terrific boat and it has a real spirit to it because they settle into it and they drive it and they made a real four mile contest out of that four mile mm. race. So mm. with no more, I'm going to turn it over here to Jim. Mm. And we're proud of you too, Charlie. Yay. 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 I just want to say thank you for everyone coming from Nova Scotia from the West Coast, from Dublin, Ireland, <laughs> to see the group here is the most awarding, rewarding thing. There are only eight seats in the boat, and there's a little place for a coxswain, but there's so much more that goes around just the name here. <laughs> it's about the eight seats and the people who row in them and it's about the coaches who come and train them and it's about the attitude these young men have given their training <clears throat> to accept not only not winning but to accept graciously winning that t-shirt down there is the oldest one i could find <laughs> it's, i think it's called a jersey yeah. It's the oldest one I could find in Tom's suitcase, where he has Olympic little treasures. He has the towel he was given with the logo on it. He has all kinds of things in Japanese that no one even knows what they are. But from around the world to here, it is always about being here at the moment. He's won medals at St. Catharines and the ROTC and put him on a bracelet for me because he got tired of looking at the box. <laughs> so this is what these young men have to learn and know that in spite of all the medals, what really matters is 50 years later <laughs> what happens. Every crew member, including those who have gone before us, I'm sure are here now. Parker, Picard, and now Paula. So thank you very much. So everybody who wants to say a word or two uh, in the course of this, please, please stand up and do so. And immediately after that, uh, we have the plaque. Um, and everybody within earshot, whatever your reason for being here, uh, you're welcome to sign the back of the plaque. Um, I'm gonna say a couple things about Tom, two incidents that are entirely true. Uh, in 1964, after we had finished our races, uh, Tom and Gundy and I were traveling around Japan. We wound up in a traditional Japanese inn. That night we were we were sleeping on the floor uh, under our futon 
and I had a flash dream that a train was coming right through our room. <laughs> which made sense because there was a set of train tracks right out our window. And I jumped up, <clears throat> not awake, jumped up, ripped the paper screen off the window frame. I had one hand on either side of the window and my foot on the sill, and I had just started to launch myself out when Tom grabbed me from behind and pulled me into the room. And I started to fight with him to get back to the window. And Gunderson got up, also asleep, and started to fight with me because he thought I was someone trying to get into the window. And then Tom turned on Gundy trying to get him off me. And the whole thing took maybe 15 seconds. Um, so that was, that's one memory of Tom. The other, I was interested to hear you say you have a, uh, something on your wrist from Lucerne. Tommy Keller, who was the head of FISA back then, had just come down the dock and given us all our gold medals. And I immediately dropped mine through a crack in the dock. <laughs> Before I realized what happened, Tom had taken his medal and given it to me without, you know, no, no time to even think about it. <clears throat> and I didn't need to think about it. I took it. <laughs> so I don't know where that came from. <laughs> they recovered your medal. You got another one. Yeah. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Or else they send Tom another one. Yeah. I don't know. There are two versions of the story. So I'm not so, sure. So anyway, that's my yeah. that's my uh, wonder if they found memory. Does, does anybody else have anything they want to say about Tom or about anything? Ken, would you mind introducing the rest of the eight man crew? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I can't remember your name. <laughs> Harry. That's Harry Pollock. Not Pollock. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby Schwartz, Brian Clemo, Chris Kirkland, our god of all things, Eddie Quatz, Eddie Quattlebaum, Ted Washburn. What's your name? <laughs> Jeff Bratwick. Uh, I, I want to introduce Nick Bancroft here as well. He's an honorary member. Sven Borden, Bobby Whitney. Uh, and then some of the spares. Okay. A spare, bottle bomb. Yeah. We, yeah. yeah. And I think that's it. And I get it, everybody. Yeah. And Chris Kirkland, the manager, yeah. who was always, always there and on top of everything and was for this reunion too. Okay. Can I say something? Yeah, please do. Just, I want to say just something very briefly. Mm -hmm. Jeff Grantwick and I wrote, I'm the small person in the crew with 64 and 5, rowing bow. And just, I think, along with Dave Hannon, where's Dave? The, I, I know knew Tom at Andover. We wrote in Andover and then I wrote for four years at Harvard with him. And the major thing, the three things I remember about Tom, one is his back. Because he, initially I wrote two, Tom had this enormous back, and those, the lats and his rhomboids were just extraordinary. And that was the major thing I knew, remembered about Tom, which was very impressive back, and he would just grunt when he pulled. So that was something. And then I'm sure many of you know that Tom had a very difficult um, disease starting off in the 30s. And Tom became, for me, a portrait of courage. That, that, uh, that I think is unparalleled in someone dealing with from the height of athleticism to being to having a very, very difficult disease, but he's still extraordinarily wise, and that's really what I'll remember most about Tom, is that having lost his body largely, he had a soul that made up for it, and Tom was one of the wisest people. I live in Bangor, Maine. Tom lives off in Berkeley, but I would call Tom probably every two or three months for I needed advice about something yeah. in my life or some decision. Tom was that person who really who really did it. And that's what Tom stands for me. And I think in thinking about coming back here, this is the I think it's the second time I've been back to an event like this. And the thing I'm proud about is being a member of this particular tribe. And a tribe is really brought together 
And I, I actually, I, I do know we won the Ruyer race, but I can't remember virtually anything else. But I remember being a part of a tribe, and that's, I congratulate all of you, and I'm just delighted to be here for Tom. Yay! Yay. <laughs> <laughs> well,